nasopharynx. So, plain x ray nasopharynx uh, is uh, usually taken in ENT, especially in case of children, we go for to find out uh, adenoid hypertrophy. You, we usually take x ray nasopharynx lateral view. Or you can also take lateral oblique view. If you take a true lateral view, there is chance of overlapping between uh, other structures. So, lateral oblique view of nasopharynx is better than a pure lateral view. So, if it is still, if it's a child with mouth breathing and snoring, uh, the <clears throat> finding will be usually an adenoid hypertrophy. So, uh, Then nose there will be an opacity arising from the uh, roof and posterior wall of nasopharynx. So it's usually like this in adenoid and also in an uh, angiofibroma you will get a finding like this and it will be going towards the anterior. But if it is and if this is uh, androgonal polyp. What will be the difference? Androgonal polyp is one which is arising from the nose and going posteriorly. So there will be an air column. There will be an air column like this between this mass and the nasopharynx, and that is seen in X-ray. That sign is called a dot sign. This is another MCQ. Okay, dot sign. That is the air column between nasopharynx and the mass which is seen in an androgonal polyp. Okay, so that is regarding the X-ray nasopharynx. Let us see some X-rays. X-ray of nasopharynx. Don't tell it as an X-ray uh, nasal bone or X-ray skull. This is X-ray of nasopharynx. Especially this is a case of 8 year old girl complaining of um, Recurrent rhinorrhea, snoring and mouth breathing. Okay, so this is X-ray uh, nasopharynx lateral view and this is used to grade adenoid hypertrophy. See, this is the, uh, this is um, nasal cavity, oral cavity and the nose uh, tracing posteriorly, you will reach the base of skull and this is a nasopharynx. Okay, so here you can see a uh, soft tissue shadow. So this is adenoid hypertrophy. And the investigation to confirm adenoid uh, hypertrophy is diagnosed in nasal endoscopy and CT scan of nose and nasopharynx. So, in these cases, you can confirm it by doing a diagnosed nasal endoscopy. Okay, and this adenoid is poorly developed at birth, and this is radiologically visible in all infants by 4 to 6 months of age. Nasopharyngeal angiofibroma, lateral x ray skull will show an anterior bowing of the posterior wall of the maxilla due to tumor here. The maxillary wall, there will be the posterior wall of maxilla will show an anterior bowing due to tumor enlarging in the tergopalatine fossa and that is called the Hallman Miller sign or the Andrel sign. Okay, in an uh, adenoid hypertrophy is common in a young age and in an androgonal polyp, you can see a column of air between the soft tissue mass and the uh, base of skull and if it is an angiofibroma there will be definitely there will be uh, clinical features findings pointing towards an angiofibroma uh, and along with that there will be Hallman Miller sign or the Andrel sign that is the uh, anterior bowing of the posterior wall of maxilla right so this is x-ray nasopharynx lateral view showing an adenoid hypertrophy x-ray lateral view skull of a boy uh, uh, safety pin went inside his nose and it's tucked where it is it is tucked inside the uh, coina inside the nose towards the coina it's an open safety pin okay so uh, this was later removed under general anesthesia this open safety pin is always very dangerous than a closed one okay so the in this you will be asked about the parts of safety pin usually if it is an open safety pin examiner will ask you about the parts of safety pin Okay, it has got a head, a loop and two limb. Okay, head, loop and two limbs. These are the parts of safety, three parts of safety pin. Head, loop and two limbs. 
X-ray skull, lateral view. Actually, this uh, uh, area showing the nasopharynx. You can see a um, button. Radiopaque density. Next soft tissue, lateral view. So uh, these are the structures seen uh, posterior to anterior. Okay, what is there? Posteriorly, you have the cervical vertebra. You have C1 to C7. And just anterior to that comes the pharynx or the prevertebral uh, space. Uh, this one. Or retropharyngeal space we call it. And anterior to that comes the um, air column. Tracheal air column. Okay. And in between you have, what is this one? This is uh, mandible. And just below the mandible, another important landmark is what is here, comes here is the um, hyoid bone. Okay. And in between the hyoid bone comes the epiglottis. Epiglottis. And what is this one? This is larynx, the laryngeal cartilages. And when uh, age advances, this there will be calcification of the laryngeal cartilages, which is seen as. Um, dense or opacities okay opacified areas you will see that is normal and that is calcified laryngeal cartilages this area all these you can see the laryngeal cartilages so that should not be confused with the uh, uh, foreign bodies okay so in an x-ray always remember to look at the normal anatomical landmarks and from the normal go to abnormal then you will, you will not miss anything so usually if there is foreign body, this foreign bodies will come and lodge somewhere here, okay, in the uh, retropharyngeal area or in the prevertebral area. And if there is a foreign body, you should um, tell the location in relation to the corresponding cervical vertebra. Okay, so in an uh, X-ray uh, soft tissue neck lateral view, you will get foreign bodies, you will get acute epiglottitis. In acute epiglottitis, you will see the epiglottis as swollen structure as thumb sign. We call it as thumb sign. And also um, foreign bodies will be there. Uh, there will be acute retropharyngeal abscess or there will be a chronic retropharyngeal abscess. So now we can see some x-rays of the neck. So in the neck, the x-ray usually taken is an x-ray soft tissue neck lateral view. And I will uh, tell you the anatomical uh, landmarks, normal anatomical landmarks, that is very important. In all x-ray, you should be familiar with the, or thorough with the normal anatomical landmarks. Then only you will be able to find out the abnormality. So, in an, uh, usually this x-ray uh, soft tissue neck, as far as possible, they should be taken in the position of minimal extension, not in flexion at all. It should be always taken in extension to get a correct uh, findings. So, this one is your mandible, the skull base. There are seven cervical vertebra. One, two, three, four, five, six and seven. Okay. And the esophagus usually corresponds to uh, the cricopharyngeal sphincter comes at C6 vertebra and from C6 below from the C7 uh, starts the esophagus. Okay. So uh, cervical vertebra and in front of that comes your uh, retropharyngeal space okay or the prevertebral space and this one this is uh, epiglottis then hyoid bone see hyoid bone uh, epiglottis overlapping the hyoid bone and uh, it's not very clear here even then here comes your uh, vocal cord and then comes the tracheal air column okay so uh, in a normal anatomy mandible skull, skull base 
the hyoid bone, epiglottis, larynx, tracheal air column, retropharyngeal space, both you can tell as retropharyngeal or prevertebral space, then cervical vertebra. Always you have to tell the uh, foreign body or site of foreign body in relation to the number uh, vertebra. So here you can see a linear radiopic foreign body in the retropharyngeal space uh, opposite to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6 opposite to C6 vertebra. Okay, so this is uh, a foreign body most probably or most commonly it will be a uh, fish bone uh, either in hypopharyngoscopy or esophagoscopy and foreign body removal using foreign body removal forceps ideally under general anesthesia and if the patient is very much cooperative and there is no facilities for an emergency general anesthesia then you can also go for a local anesthesia so the this is x-ray soft tissue neck lateral lateral view showing in linear radiopic foreign body in front of c6 vertebra and the treatment is removal of this foreign body using foreign body removal forceps using an hypopharyngoscopy or an esophagoscopy under uh, general anesthesia or local anesthesia okay and if you are not removing this foreign body there is chance of this penetrating or migrating into other areas and also going for an acute retropharyngeal this is also an excess soft tissue neck lateral view and you can see a linear radiopic foreign body opposite to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, opposite to C7 vertebra. Okay, this, this should also be uh, removed using a foreign body removal forceps under anesthesia with the esophagoscopy. And what about this? Here also there is a linear radiopic foreign body opposite to uh, C6, 5 and 6 with the, here you see, here there is a widening of the retropharyngeal space this space is retropharyngeal so there is widening of the retropharyngeal space uh, when will you call it as a widening uh, to call as an abscess here definitely you have compared to this side there is definitely a widening of the prevertebral uh, soft tissue shadow isn't it there is a widening of the prevertebral soft tissue shadow so to call it as an retropharyngeal abscess this widening should be more than 3 fourth the diameter of corresponding cervical vertebral body though so this is the corresponding cervical vertebral body so this is half and this will be 3 fourth so more than 3 fourth right should be more than 3 fourth the diameter of the corresponding cervical vertebral body this widening should be more than 3 fourth the diameter of corresponding cervical vertebral body then this is called widening of the retropharyngeal space so, if a uh, penetrative foreign body is causing a retropharyngeal uh, widening, then it is uh, acute retropharyngeal abscess. And this is acute retropharyngeal abscess. Uh, the most common cause of an acute retropharyngeal abscess is penetrating injury in adult mainly due to foreign body. So, the most common cause of an acute retropharyngeal abscess in adult is a penetrating injury mainly due to a foreign body. But in children, the most common cause of acute retropharyngeal abscess in children is retropharyngeal lymphadenitis. Okay, there is glands of Henle. You have a glands of Henle there. So, the retropharyngeal uh, lymphadenitis is the commonest cause of acute retropharyngeal abscess in uh, children. So, remember retropharyngeal abscess two types acute and chronic. Acute is due to uh, penetrating injury in adult. And in chronic retropharyngeal abscess is due to tuberculosis. So in that cases, there will be features of uh, tuberculosis of the cervical spine. So what is that? X-ray evidence of destruction and collapse of intervertebral disc. Collapse of intervertebral disc along with the destruction. That will be present in case of chronic retropharyngeal abscess. Right? This is again an X-ray soft tissue neck. And here also you can, I, I'll explain, I'll tell you the anatomical landmarks once again. Mandible, uh, base of skull, hyoid bone, epiglottis, cervical vertebra, prevertebral space, otherwise called the retropharyngeal space, and then the tracheal air column. This is the larynx. Uh, it's better seen here. 
shadow of larynx and tracheal air column. So definitely there here there is a widening of the retropharyngeal space. I told you it should be more than three fourth the diameter of the vertebral body of corresponding vertebral body. Here you can uh, see that it is more than three fourth. This much of widening is there. See this much of widening along with air shadow. So this is an acute retropharyngeal abscess, right? So what is the treatment of this acute retropharyngeal abscess? Anyway, you have to drain an acute whenever wherever there is pus, it has, it has to be removed by incision and drainage. And this retropharyngeal abscess is a serious emergency. So admit the patient, start on IV, broad spectrum antibiotic, correct uh, fluid and electrolyte imbalance if any, and under anesthesia, go for an hypopharyngoscopy or esophagoscopy and remove the foreign body if any using a foreign body removal forceps. In some cases, foreign body will not be there. Where is a foreign body? It might have gone into the esophagus and into the stomach. So we'll, you will not get a foreign body. Anyway, in the, if there is an abscess, it has to be uh, drained using an endoscopic scissors. So if there is a retropharyngeal abscess, you uh, do an esophagoscopy and if remove the foreign body if any otherwise using an endoscopy scissors put a cruciate incision okay not linear it should be cruciate cruciate incision why cruciate incision cruciate incision will not um, approximate easily if you put only a very linear incision immediately after you put a, uh, take the suction it will close so put a cruciate incision in case of abscess uh, where will you put the incision? Over the most bulging point of the abscess. Okay, most bulging point of the abscess and then drain the pus using suction clearance. If there is a chance of airway compromise, even this can cause an airway compromise if you place in a boy, uh, boy's position. So if there is chance of airway compromise, do a tracheostomy prior to endoscopy. First do a tracheostomy under local anesthesia, then after that induce anesthesia and do the esophagoscopy and do incision drainage of the abscess okay there is soft tissue in a lateral view uh, what are the findings seen here here you can see a straightening of the cervical vertebra that is one thing and second there is widening of the retropharyngeal space definite widening is there along with this what is this this is an esogastric tube okay an esogastric tube so uh, this patient uh, came with an acute retropharyngeal abscess so the abscess was drained under general anesthesia and for feeding we put a nasogastric tube okay so that is why it is there here there is straightening of the cervical vertebra in a uh, huge retropharyngeal abscess you get a straightening of the cervical vertebra so uh, straightening of the cervical vertebra widening of the uh, retropharyngeal space with an nasogastric tube in situ so, yes what about this x-ray soft tissue in a lateral view one there is straightening of the cervical vertebra second there is uh, widening of the retropharyngeal space along with the air shadow and also can you see a foreign body here linear radio opaque shadow opposite to 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 so opposite to 5 6 7 you can see uh, linear uh, it's not linear it's like an L shaped isn't it so there is a radio opaque shadow also so a foreign body seen there widening of the retropharyngeal space is there and also air column is there along with the uh, straightening of the cervical vertebra diagnosis acute retropharyngeal abscess with the foreign body throat foreign body in the uh, um, pharynx opposite to c5 6 and 7 and what is this these are all uh, laryngeal cartilages okay don't confuse this with foreign body these are the uh, laryngeal cartilage this this is uh, this patient is 56 years old so there is calcification of the laryngeal cartilages that is why it is like this this is hyoid bone epiglottis and larynge larynx laryngeal cartilages okay thyroid cartilage this one superior cornea and inferior cornea right so this is the foreign body don't confuse this with and also even this uh, tracheal cartilages are also calcified so they are showing an uh, hyperdensity right so acute retropharyngeal abscess, straightening with widening of the retropharyngeal space, air shadow. Treatment, I already told you. Admit the patient, start on IV, broad spectra antibiotic, color fluid and electrolyte imbalance if any. 
and uh, uh, do an uh, esophagoscopy or a hypopharyngoscopy under anesthesia and remove the uh, foreign body along with it use an endoscopy scissors and put a cruciate incision over the most bulging point of the abscess and drain the pus using suction. If there is chance of airway compromise, do a tracheostomy prior to endoscopy. X-ray soft tissue neck, androposterior view and this is uh, same patient, X-ray soft tissue neck, lateral view. What is that? You can see a open uh, safety pin where in the pharynx at the level of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, opposite to 4, 5, 6. Isn't it? And this is the androposterior view. In the androposterior view, you cannot tell whether it is in the air column or in the pharynx. Only in the lateral view, you can confirm the diagnosis. This is the tracheal air column and uh, behind that is the pharynx and it, uh, the foreign body is in the uh, retropharyngeal space. Okay. Or in the pre-vertebral space. So, this is uh, open for, uh, safety pin. And this open uh, safety pin is dangerous than a closed one and again this is uh, inverted or open downwards open end is downwards so a for, uh, safety pin with open and downwards is safer than an upward uh, pointed open end okay if it is the uh, other type other way that is if the uh, this open uh, portion is upward it is more dangerous because while uh, while removing this uh, pointed end can injure that. So, this is X-ray. Uh, soft tissue neck lateral view showing a shadow of an open safety pin in the retropharyngeal space opposite to um, C4 uh, to 6. Since the pointed end is downward, it is relatively safe. So, this can be removed with a special forceps called Clerf Aerosmith Safety Pin Closing Forceps. Clerf Aerosmith Safety Pin Closing Forceps. Okay. So that is a special uh, forceps for removal of uh, open safety pin. We can close the safety pin within the endoscope and then can remove that. Okay. This is uh, X-ray uh, neck with uh, chest and you can see a, a round radiopaque shadow. Yeah? It's a radiopaque round shadow. What is that? Probably or most common, mostly this will be a coin. It is in the cricopharynx. Why can, how can you tell that it is in the uh, cricopharynx? Because this shadow is seen in the coronal plane. Opening of the cricopharynx is located in the coronal plane. See, this is in the coronal plane. Our cricopharynx is in the coronal plane. Like this. So, if a foreign body comes and lodges here, it will be like this in the coronal plane in uh, X-ray uh, AP view. So, you will get a shadow like this. So, this foreign body is a coin impacted in the cricopharynx. But think if it is in the uh, glottis, larynx, the vocal cords are like this. So, if a foreign body is coming and lodging there, it will be in the transverse plane. Isn't it? It will X-ray will be like this. I'll show you the X-ray of a child with a foreign body lodged in the glottis. See? Can you see that? It will be like this. So further we can confirm this by taking an X-ray soft tissue neck in the lateral view. Actually, for the child, there was no need of doing an esophagoscopy. Before that, it went down, and uh, this is X-ray abdomen of the same child with a coin. In the next morning, he expelled it with his feces. So in X-ray soft tissue neck lateral view, you can see a uh, linear uh, opacity opposite to 3, 4, uh, 5, C5, C6. See, with a uh, air column in the uh, pharyngeal space. Okay, so here, linear uh, radio density opposite to C5, C6. See uh, this one. Okay. Hyperdense area opposite to C5 and 6. Again, this is a 
foreign body in the hypopharynx can be removed with a foreign body removal forceps under anesthesia using an uh, esophagoscopy or hypopharyngoscopy under general anesthesia and a foreign body removal using uh, foreign body removal forceps. This is soft tissue in a collateral view showing a radio dense opacity opposite to C4, uh, C5 vertebra with the straightening of the cervical vertebra and widening of the retropharyngeal space. The diagnosis it is an acute retropharyngeal abscess with a foreign body in the uh, pharynx. Yeah, since it is in the uh, C4, uh, C5 uh, vertebra, we can tell it as a foreign body in the hypo, uh, hypopharynx. So, acute retropharyngeal abscess with a foreign body in the hypopharynx. What treatment will you give? The treatment is uh, removal of the first um, hypopharyngoscopy. Uh, under general anesthesia, removal of this foreign body using foreign body removal forceps and then uh, drain, drainage of the abscess um, by putting a cruciate incision over the most bulging point of the abscess and drain the pus using suction. Okay. And if, if it is a uh, chronic retropharyngeal abscess, if this is an acute retropharyngeal abscess, but if it is a chronic retropharyngeal abscess, I already told a chronic retropharyngeal abscess is due to uh, tuberculosis. The treatment is start on a full course of anti-tubercular therapy ATT. Abscess drained externally. In case of a chronic retropharyngeal abscess, abscess is drained externally through a vertical incision along the sternomastoid muscle. But in case of an acute retropharyngeal abscess, the abscess is drained through uh, endoscope. Okay, soft tissue in a collateral view with a uh, linear uh, radiopaque shadow opposite to C3, C4 along with the widening at the retropharyngeal space. Again, diagnosis is acute retropharyngeal abscess with a foreign body in the hypopharynx. So, that is all about X-ray mastoid, X-ray nasal bone, X-ray paranasal sinus. X-ray nasopharynx and X-ray soft tissue necrotal view. It is very important not only for the exam and also it is important as consultants in a uh, end their life it is important. So get thorough with the normal anatomy and if any doubt just ask in the comment box. Thank you.